In The Expanse, the proto-molecule is not just a fancy alien technology. It is a reality-bending hive mind that has the potential to impact the entire solar system. The story of the proto-molecule is packed with infected humans turning into vomiting zombies, giant space stations like the Ring Builder failing against its effect, and the power struggle and greed of the stakeholders that see the proto-molecule as a weapon. Marvelous videos bring such exciting content every day. To support our channel, kindly click the like and subscribe buttons. Without further ado, let's take a deep dive into the world of this blue glowing nightmare called the Proto Molecule. There's something in the reactor. It looks like it consumed everyone else. What is the Proto Molecule and where did it come from? Two billion years ago, an alien civilization sent the Proto Molecule into an interstellar asteroid. Saturn's gravity captured this asteroid, and it became one of Saturn's moons named Phoebe. When humans got infected by the Proto Molecule and died, the Proto Molecule was considered a weapon. However, the investigator confirmed with James Holden that it was not a weapon. The Proto Molecule is a tool created by the Ring Builders as an advanced, pre programmed platform. It uses biomass from the alien world to ensure that instead of dying, life is transformed. The samples sent two billion years ago to the stars were invented for galaxy exploration. When the proto molecule comes into contact with a replication mechanism, it activates. The proto molecule's primary goal is to create the required interstellar communication and travel infrastructure. After growing adequate biomass, it shifts to the furthest limits of the targeted stellar system and then builds a gate. It establishes a wormhole that connects to its creator's ring network, consisting of several other gates. The other important use of the proto molecule is to develop necessary facilities on planets like data storage, power plants, etc. After the proto molecule is released, the human brain discovers that it guides, diverts, or impacts individual consciousness. But when it absorbs living matter, it is not conscious, making it only a tool and not a type of alien life. Alex, hold up. Swing back. How did humanity discover the proto molecule? The MCR landed on Phoebe, Saturn's ice moon, in 0XTE to survey it for the purpose of ice mining. The core samples collected from Phoebe were investigated, and the presence of silica was revealed. The Martian government collaborated with a corporation from Earth, Protogen, to co-sponsor the research facility on Phoebe. A team of Martian scientists and Protogen's team landed on Phoebe. The exploration of the icy moon began for ice mining when the Protogen team discovered a strange component in the samples. They named this component the Proto Molecule. What were Protogen's experiments with the Proto Molecule? After the discovery of the proto molecule on Phoebe, the Protogen team begins conducting experiments on it. Antony Dresden leads the Protogen team and commands it to expose the Martian scientists to the proto molecule. The Martian scientists are entrapped inside a containment lab in the research station. The Protogen team uses them to observe the effects of the proto molecule on humans and study its evolution. After learning the impact of the infection, they killed the Martian scientists using gas before burning their bodies. This dangerous experimentation on living beings strongly indicates MCRN's strategy to develop powerful weaponry against Earth. What happened with the Anubis and Scopuli? The Protogen team took the collected samples of the proto molecule from Phoebe and placed them in the Anubis, a stealth ship, to transport them to another location. During the journey, Anubis encountered a Martian light transport freighter, the Scopuli, and attacked it. The crew members on the Scopuli were captured and taken as prisoners. 
these prisoners were exposed to the protomolecule and infected. The situation escalated when all the prisoners and the entire crew of the Anubis got infected. The second assumption points out that perhaps the crew present on the Scopuli were belters, including Julie Mao. They escaped to Phoebe's research station after witnessing Protogen launch its first protomolecular experiment. The Anubis might have been directed to erase all the evidence of the protomolecular experiment and, thus, the scopuli. In any of these scenarios, the infection spread to every person on the ship, killing the Anubis and the scopuli crew members. However, Julie Mao survived because she was imprisoned in an isolated place. She managed to escape using the shuttle Anubis 1A to Eros, where she eventually died. Julie's body was then found by Detective Miller, the crew of the Rosinante and Protogen team led by Anthony Dresden. What was the Eros Station incident? The Protogen team extracted protomolecule samples from Julie Mao's body on asteroid Eros and prepared for a larger scale experiment using it. They planned to infect 100,000 humans on Eros as a controlled experiment to study the effect of protomolecular infection on them. After the infection began, Thoth Station received the signals from which the experiment results were analyzed. A ship exploded on Eros's docks, and an emergency was announced. All civilians were asked to gather in shelters where they were given shots of protomolecule. These civilians were exposed to high radiation to trigger the protomolecule's growth. James Holden and Josephus Miller entered a shelter and were exposed to the radiation. However, they quickly escaped and used various medicines to slow down the effects of the radiation. They encountered the infected civilians who vomited protomolecule, and thus, they eventually came to be known as pukers. CPM personnel were unaware of Protogen's true intent and trouble began between them. Miller managed to kill Antony Dresden on Thoth Station. The Outer Planets Alliance stole the Nauvoo and sent it to Eros. Talbot Leeds took a team of Belters and Josephus Miller to Eros to plant nuclear weapons on the station to prohibit the infected humans from spreading the infection. The Outer Planets Alliance tried to ram Nauvoo into Eros, but the protomolecule life form on the Eros station moved its location, avoiding the impact. Miller then entered the Eros station to plant the nuclear warhead to destroy the protomolecule controlling Eros. There, he found Julie, who was previously dead, but now she was alive and a part of the protomolecule. She was taking the Eros towards Earth, which would only infect the entire planet. Miller persuaded Julie against it and convinced her to divert Eros to Venus, where it collided with the planet's surface. What was happening on Osiris Station? Osiris Station was located within the Protogen's solar system. When Protogen began its experiment on Eros, Thoth and Osiris Stations were conducting experiments on the protomolecule. Osiris was a sister facility along with Thoth Station. While the Thoth Station was the primary site that conducted larger scale experiments, Osiris had smaller scale projects. After the Eros outbreak, Osiris Station continued with its research on the protomolecules. It focused primarily on Project Caliban. The purpose of this project was to develop improved human protomolecule hybrids. What was Project Caliban? Project Caliban was a collaboration between Protogen, some elements of the United Nations, and the Martian Congressional Republic MCR, governments. The project aimed to study the newly discovered protomolecule and weaponize it by infecting humans with it and creating super soldiers. Under this project, Mao protomolecule hybrid, a human super soldier, was created. This hybrid was successfully tested on Ganymede for the first time. The hybrid was placed into a cage on Ganymede, but it broke out of its cell and killed everyone present before escaping through the airlock. The hybrid attached itself to the Rosinante and entered the ship. 
The hybrid was invulnerable to fire. The hybrid attacked again. A nuclear warhead lured it despite Praxedeek's hesitation, and Alex Kamal destroyed it. This Ganymede incident happened 18 months after the Eros incident. What did the proto-molecule build on Venus? The Eros station descended on Venus's surface after the infection incident. The proto-molecule spread rapidly and began reshaping Venus. The observers from the Sol system had abundant data by now, yet they were unaware of the proto-molecule's prime objective. Arbogast was a military science vessel. It observed Venus from orbit and transferred all the collected data to the United Nations. The mission continued for eight months before the ship received a brief radiation pulse of unknown origin. Right after receiving this radiation pulse, the entire crew of the Arbogast, which consisted of 572 personnel, was killed because of vacuum exposure since the whole vessel was disassembled right down to the level of bolts and screws. The protomolecule hive mind showcased an ability for rapid communication on Venus and beyond. What is the Sol Ring? The protomolecule established a gigantic complex of structures right outside Uranus's orbit in 12 XTE. It built a thousand kilometer wide thing named the Ring, also known as the Sol Gate. The protomolecule created this Sol Ring from the remnants of Eros Station. The Ring is, in fact, a wormhole gate. It existed as part of an old network built by an alien civilization. The Sol Ring connects the Sol System to this ancient intergalactic network and more than a thousand other systems in the galaxy. Many of these systems consisted of habitable planets. It helped humans in interstellar travel and to colonize these habitable planets. The Ring is the conclusive stage of the protomolecule life cycle. That is, it converts itself into a wormhole, which then further leads to the slow zone and ring station. The slow zone is also known as Dandelion Sky. It is accessible from the normal universe through the ring network. It is a starless, black, spherical space. 1,373 ring gates are located equally around the slow zone's periphery, and at the center of it is the ring station, which controls the whole ring network. How did the proto-molecule affect Illus? The proto-molecule disrupted and deactivated the alien defense system of Illus in the beginning. Then, it activated the alien technology that spread a network of ring gates. James Holden used the protomolecule to communicate with the alien station at Abaddon's Gate, at the center of the rings. It created a ripple effect that activated the ancient dormant alien machinery on Illus planet. It also resulted in the deactivation of the Illus defense system. Miller used Holden to fix and reactivate parts of the defense system to avoid a catastrophe, or Illus would have been completely destroyed. What happened to the stolen protomolecule sample? Free Navy is the naval military branch of a section of the Outer Planets Alliance and is self-styled. It attacked Tycho Station, the largest mobile construction platform in the Sol System. The last known protomolecule sample was kept at Tycho Station, but the Free Navy got its hands on it after the attack. The Free Navy conflict arose between the Consolidated Fleet and the Free Navy. After this conflict, the knowledge of the sample's whereabouts was lost. However, the protomolecule samples were given to the rogue Martian fleet of Winston Duart. The fleet took those samples to Laconia, which was an Earth-like planet. The rogue fleet established a functioning government in Laconia, which was the Laconian Empire. The Laconian system remained secluded from the interstellar human community for the next 30 years. Laconia Station used the protomolecule samples they had stolen from Tycho Station and the Ring Builder Empire shipyard to develop new technologies. Those who dared to stand against the Laconians were locked inside the isolated rooms. They were exposed to the protomolecule to activate protomolecule technology. How does the protomolecule infect and alter life? The protomolecule is contagious. 
spreads through touch, and cannot be disseminated through air. Although the protomolecule was designed for its use on single-celled organisms, it is evident that it can also be effective on multicellular organisms. The protomolecule spreads internally in humans. It takes about several weeks for it to alter its host. During this phase, the host hibernates. However, this infection process is rapid if exposed to ionizing radiation. After the host wakes up from hibernation, they become feverish and disoriented. They show symptoms similar to a hemorrhagic fever. A brown-colored fluid starts leaking out of the host's orifices, and now they are labeled as vomit zombies. They stagger unstably on their feet and vomit the brown fluid which can infect others. The alteration of the host begins, which often involves molding multiple host biomasses and modifying particular organs to carry out new functions. The further changes are highly unpredictable. Some striking features after the alteration are blue luminescence, brown slime, and black filaments. In the last phase of the life cycle of the protomolecule, it creates a hive mind using the biomass of many intelligent hosts. In the unique case of Julie Mao, she was used as a seed for the nascent consciousness after the infection. Marvelous verdict. The protomolecule, initially seen as a weapon, was actually a tool developed to impact the whole solar system. The peculiar substance reminded us how small humans are compared to the undiscovered forces. So that's all for today's video. Let us know which topic to cover next, and we will bring it to you. Also, comment down below which part of The Expanse excites you the most. And we will see you in the next one. Stay safe out there and uh, have yourself a good one. Thanks, everyone.